Well, the surprisingly tight referendum on EU membership featuring allegations, as you heard there, of Russian vote buying has elicited mixed reactions from Moldovans as well as from analysts, with some suggesting that it is a wake-up call to defend democracy. It's sad for me because I absolutely cannot understand why it happened like this because all aspects of life and perspectives show that we should be in EU. I don't know how a large part of population did not understand this but it's regrettable. We hope that things will be better both economically and socially, we wait for the young ones that left abroad to come back to Moldova and we hope for a better development in the countryside, in the villages. The citizens' answer to the referendum was very clear. They decided for themselves. They went to vote in this referendum in unprecedented numbers and we have a positive result. Indeed at the limit, but this result must be seen in the broader context Moldova finds itself in a confrontation with the Russian Federation and these are the challenges we must preoccupy ourselves with from now on and this result underscore again, at the limit but still positive because the majority of citizens expressed their vote underscore is a solid base for strengthening the resistance of our citizens in the face of Russian attempts to divert Moldova from its European path. Well, for more on this, let's bring in the European Affairs Analyst, Dr. Marek Laskovic, who's been monitoring developments from London. Uh, thank you very much indeed for joining us, uh, Dr. Laskovic, and good to see you again. So the presidential election in Moldova uh, will go to a second round and a referendum on EU membership held alongside that election scrapes um, through by a rather tiny margin. I mean, that's not what was expected before voting got underway on Sunday, was it? No. One of the reasons why it is not expected is because the West lives in a bubble of its own propaganda. The views of other nations, uh, to take one obvious one, Iran, is simply regarded as views of people who are extremists. It's simply not taken into account that people may not want uh, the West or the EU and therefore, when it goes wrong, or nearly wrong, at the polling booths, everyone's very surprised. Therefore, it follows that the point is not that they voted for the EU, but it was an extremely, extremely narrow margin. It by no means is clear-cut, because there is a second round of voting, of course. And therefore, the situation is that, as in the case of Hungary, as in the case of other countries, Russia has an appeal which is simply not being understood or met or coped with very well by the West. Well, I mean, the current president, uh, Maya Sandu, has blamed what she called an assault on democracy by foreign forces. I mean, what do you reckon she was referring to? Well, I think it's pretty clear that she was referring to people buying votes. But it has to be pointed out, the same thing is happening in America. It's all very well going on about Russia, but other countries do the same. And therefore, what she really is saying is that Russia is interfering in some respect. But then what constitutes interference? If the West says and does things which are designed to entice Moldova into an EU future, that's simply called, if you like, uh, presenting. And Russia, of course, is regarded as everything it does is bad. And because the narrative as given in the West, is so presented, people are then very surprised when not everyone buys into it. It's clear the Russian had some impact, but the Russian impact can't explain the narrowness of the decision by itself. And, of course, there were two votes, if you like. I mean, the other one was the presidential election. Um, Maya Sandu is a pro-Western leader. She did well enough to stay in the race, but not as well as polls had indicated. Precisely. It is precisely the same election simply being fought on another field. Whether it's presidential or e-referendum, it's quite clear Moldova, and by no means only Moldova, is actually, 
how can I put it? Teetering. They're in two minds. They and there's the Russian future and there's the EU future. And the EU future, which the EU and the West presumes uh, that it's all good, is simply not being seen in that respect. Um, in a sense, what the EU is not facing up with, of not facing up to, is the challenge within the EU by many people dissatisfied with the EU, and Moldova is simply an external version of what's happening within the EU. The message here should be, one would expect her to win, but it's by no means going to be easy because the sheer amount of people who oppose her, a, a country divided in two that closely, implies it's going to be unstable and that therefore, should she in some respect or EU fail, it may swing the other way another time. I'm just turning to the other vote that you mentioned there, uh, Dr. Laskovic, uh, which is, of course, the EU referendum on enshrining EU membership in the Constitution. As we mentioned earlier, that was on a knife edge throughout and finally got through on a wafer-thin majority. I mean, I know you touched on this earlier, but, I mean, the expectation was that the margin would be much bigger because, I mean, every single assessment and every single opinion poll showed that the Moldovan people wanted to be part of the European Union. A very interesting point. This is actually part of the sepology, and it actually comes in your program. You had three interviews, each of which were pro-EU, but none pro-Russian. And it's precisely because of this way of setting it up that you none does not hear the message from the other people and not hearing it from the other people, or even worse, because I read the account um, by a Western station, which simply interviewed people who apparently had, had their votes bought. In other words, the Russian given them money. The, the level of appeal of Russia is simply not coming across and not being recognized. Therefore, when you do uh, polls, as you were saying there before, which showed that the EU was out in front, the question should always be, whom were you polling? The most famous ones in 1930s in the States, when they actually made a telephone vote, and then, then the Democrats won, not realizing that the people who owned the telephone in those days of luxury were the Republicans. And so therefore, they were not polling the entire population, but merely a part. I suspect that the polling that was done beforehand was, in fact, because people, some people were being left out. Well, I'm glad you mentioned balance there, um, Dr. Laskovic, uh, and I'm glad that you yourself attempted to bring a measure of balance. That's why you are the, the analyst. Um, but also, uh, as I'm sure you know, it's difficult sometimes getting information um, out of Russia, that get it translated and all the rest of it. But um, before the ballot took place, though, I mean, th there had been lots of attempts, apparently, to rig the votes beforehand. Yes, this is quite standard. The thing about rigging votes or being able to rig them, um, out in Eastern Europe is by no means the only accusation ever made about this. The classic is, of course, Russia itself, whereby any vote there I don't think can be classified as a true uh, free vote in any respect. But the other problem is, when we talk about vote rigging and uh, actions, um, again, the West itself, if it gets a candidate it doesn't like, has, has in its past also uh, made actions against them. One of the problems here is to separate the truth from the chaff, so to speak. Many people talk about rigging. I would, on the hand, judging from all the information we have, say, yes, there was probably some attempt at vote rigging. Yes, there was some attempt at voter corruption, but that would not explain the sheer level of support from Russia. But as you rightly pointed out, it is very hard actually uh, to find uh, necessarily people are willing to state openly on television they support Russia because the sheer level of, if you like, vitriolic uh, invective hurled at Russia. And therefore, it is a very, very real problem to get that balance view, to get the information, which is why if you intimidate voters, who then afterwards have a free a say, you're not likely to find out where you're going wrong because no voter will tell you because they're too scared to do so, be it on television or be it to uh, your, the, the politician going around. Very interesting indeed. Uh, we appreciate your assessment. Uh, Dr. Marek Laskovic is the European Affairs Analyst. He was talking to me there on the line from London. Thank you very much. Indeed.